Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL K10 which is even more proofs uh, but this time we are going with the isosceles triangles which is kind of a continuation of the last IXL K9. Okay so we have two column proofs here and they're going to be uh, listing statements that we have to prove uh, mathematically with certain reasons and they give us a series of options as to what to choose for that. Okay, so kind of a rule of thumb I've been saying for each of these in the uh, K category of the IXLs is the last couple are usually devoted to either the four main uh, congruence rules, so AAS, ASA, SAS, or SSS, and um, the uh, CPCTC, or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's usually the last one. In fact, that's what this one looks like. Um, so they'll give you a series of triangles like this, and you're supposed to prove something at the end, and you just have to give the reasons. So um, we'll go to the fourth statement here, and we'll see that it already says that both triangles are overall going to be proven congruent. So yeah, very good indication it's going to be one of these four. So let's see what information we have. So we see that uh, these two uh, single ring angles are going to be congruent. We have these two uh, double ring angles as congruent, and what else does it give us? See, yx is congruent, ww, yes. Um, yz and yz also congruent. So these two, uh, so this specific line is uh, congruent with itself, which is, of course, the reflexive property when something is equal to itself. Um, and that's just saying that these two triangles share this side, so very clearly it's going to be the same for both, right? It's the same side, it, it can't deviate in any capacity. So it looks like we have a um, angle followed by an angle followed by a side. So that's what I'm going to go with. Angle, angle, side uh, congruence theorem. And then since we can now conclude that wy equals wx, because we just proved everything was congruent, that is definitely going to be CPCTC. Um, if you want a more uh, of an explanation for CPCTC, go back to IXL I believe it's K10, I'm sorry, K8, maybe K7, um, on what that means. But that's usually going to be the last one. It's just indicating uh, one piece is congruent uh, if we've already proven the entire triangle is congruent. Okay. So complete the proof that RT equals RS, or is congruent to RS. Okay, so it looks like this is going to follow very similar logic. Um, so triangle RSU, R... SU and RTU is going to be congruent, and how do we know that? So it says T and S are going to be congruent, angles T and S, okay. It says that ST and RU are going to be uh, perpendicular, meaning this is a right angle and this is a right angle, which is what uh, statement three is saying. And then it says RU is equal to RU, so again, reflexive property. This equals itself, this is a side that is shared by both triangles. So Again, we have an angle followed by an angle followed by a side for both triangles, meaning it's going to be angle, angle, side again. And then since we know both triangles are congruent, we know for sure that RT is congruent with RS, which is going to be the CPCTC. We've already proven congruence, and this is just a statement um, saying something we now we know for sure because we know the triangles are congruent. Okay. So triangle here, T is the midpoint, but... Um, of RS right here, and RS is perpendicular to QT. So uh, to note off of that, since T is the midpoint here, that means it splits RS into equal halves, meaning ST and TR are going to be equal, right? Two equal halves of the entirety of SR. And then since we know QT is perpendicular, we know that these two angles right here are going to be 90 degrees and therefore also the same. So we already have a side followed by an angle, great. And let's see what else they give us. Um, let's see, RT and ST, we just said that. QT is congruent with QT because of the reflexive property, very common with this IXL, I guess. So we have this side is congruent with uh, itself. So we have side and then a side, no, we have a side, then an angle, and then inside. And then we have a side and then an, an angle, and then also the other side. So it's gonna be side, angle, side. And they already, proven that for us. Okay, um, so we'll go down to the specific statement here. That is RT is congruent with ST. RT is congruent with ST. 
And how do we know that? Well, they said t is the midpoint, and that is going to be white, splitting that in half, as I explained earlier. So we'll go through the options here. And my recommendation to students is that with proofs, you usually want to do process of elimination. So are we doing with additive prop are we dealing with additive property of length? We're not adding anything together here. All right angles are congruent, nothing to do with angles. This is about lengths, right? Definition of angle bisector, again, just lengths, not angles. Definition of equilateral triangle, no equilateral equilateral triangles here. Definition of midpoint, yeah, probably. And then vertical angle theorem. Nothing to do with angles. So we're going to do definition of midpoint, click submit, and we are going to be at 50 already. All right, cool. So we'll look at the proof here. We have two triangles. And just from the position of this, it looks like to me we're going to be choosing one of the four theorems, which is nice and easy. So let's see what they give us. They give us that um, YWZ, YWZ is going to be congruent to XWZ, XWZ. So these two angles are congruent. These single rings are congruent. Good. It gives us that these two lines are perpendicular. Therefore, these two are going to be right angles and the same. Great, so we have an angle and we have an angle. And then it gives us that WZ and WZ is congruent, uh, are congruent. So WZ is congruent with itself. So it looks like we have an, uh, an angle followed by a side followed by another angle. So we're gonna do ASA. And that'll be the end of that. Okay, so we've hit 60. This is usually where I end with my class when it comes to the proof IXLs. Um, after this point, it looks like it just asks you to do at least uh, two reasons moving forward. Not a big deal. Um, again, uh, as kind of a hint for the last couple statements, you're probably going to be choosing CP, CTC, and uh, uh, one of the four um, uh, congruence theorems. And then just observe here and use process of elimination from stuff we've gone over in class. Determine whether you're dealing with angles or lengths, and that'll make a big difference. Okay. So stay safe, study hard, and I'll catch you for the next IXL tutorial. Goodbye.